Okay, so uh, the Y5 project is about implementing existing BFT type consensus in, in the subnets. Uh, and uh, motivation motivation behind the project is is uh, that Utica has only uh, two simple uh, uh, consensus uh, protocols and uh, to investigate and explore uh, new uh, subnet uh, features we need to add uh, other consensus protocols and we discussed uh, all uh, candidates and decided that we uh, we implement uh, Tendermint Tendermint protocol, but in black black box uh, model or service based uh, model. Um, and uh, current assumptions that uh, restrict us are as follows. So the first is that we work in permission setting. Uh, we have one-to-one -one relationship uh, between Udica nodes and Tendermint nodes. Uh, sidecar design, uh, when users Udica and Tendermint nodes are co-located. And uh, the new one uh, is that uh, Udica node reuses uh, the corresponding Tendermint nodes. Uh, sec P256, key one, key. Uh, the design, uh, the main peculiarity of the design from my perspective is that uh, Tendermint is applied in a not typical way. Uh, as uh, services like Zookeeper or Chebby. And, uh, but in what does it mean to uh, not typical? So the typical uh, Tendermint, uh, the typical design to use uh, Tendermint is to uh, implement uh, abstract blockchain interface for application. So that would, uh, a Tendermint centric design where a Udica code base uh, would be used as a backend and Tendermint as a front end. And we decided to, to not uh, use this uh, approach because uh, probably we would require to uh, refactor many Utica code and that not fit well with other uh, probably edit in the future uh, protocols. So the idea is to use Tendermint as a message system with BFT uh, total order broadcast uh, pr properties. Uh, without any modifications of the file coin state. So Tendermint. Shall we ask questions like, like interrupt you with questions? So how do you want? I can keep my question for later, but we'll I wait take clarification the question. What do you prefer? Uh, please ask. <laughs> well, I think has a question. Yeah. Okay. Just a clarification. What, what's ABCI based model? Application blockchain interface. It's a Tendermint. Tendermint. It's a Tendermint. Ah, okay. Yes, this is a special interface uh, that uh, suggests that uh, the developer of the application will uh, implement several methods like check transaction, deliver transaction, end block, begin block, info, query blockchain, and so on. Uh, and the developer can implement that model in different languages. So uh, the implementation is not a language specific because uh, the interactions uh, are over uh, gRPC, as I remember. Uh, yes. Uh, the next question. 
Yes, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more why, why this abstraction is not the right one? Uh, because from my perspective, it, it would uh, mean that uh, that we create uh, only we will use only one tendermint protocol. So we will refactor many code from Udica to adapt this model. But this refactoring uh, will not be applied for other uh, consensus. In the, proposed, in the proposed way, at least we can use other uh, blockchain protocols uh, in the same way, and we can uh, explore how Udica uh, Udica properties in this model. What is the latency, uh, throughput, and so on and so. On. So uh, right. uh, the proposed approach can be used with any uh, uh, blockchain protocols that provide uh, the interface. Okay, very nice. Yeah, it makes complete sense. So rather than adapting everything to this particular one, we have a different interface and rather adapt, like wrap the consensus protocol in something that is compatible with. with yes. Exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, perfect, perfect. That's what I had in mind as well. So in the so in the proposed uh, method, we are implementing Udica uh, consensus interface. Adapted right. to different protocols. Yes, yeah, thanks. Uh, and uh, the last one is that uh, we, at least currently, we reuse, uh, we use two independent P2P networks one from Tendermint nodes uh, to spread disseminate Tendermint blocks, and uh, another one. Uh, the existed one in Utica. Okay. Marco, you wanted to ask something. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Okay. And uh, this is the basic architecture. Uh, uh, for nodes, each node uh, is connected to the corresponding Tendermint node. Uh, this, this, uh, this all nodes uh, have different uh, CP uh, keys, and uh, Udica clients uh, can access them. Um, and this one is Tendermint P2P uh, network, and another one is uh, Udica P2P network, and and this is this. Uh, these lines are uh, uh, HTTP uh, interactions over HTTP protocol between uh, two uh, nodes. So basically how it works. Uh, each Udica node interacts with a trusted Tendermint node and of course uh, the corresponding no node is considered as a trust node. Uh, Utica sends all input messages from uh, pools, from cross messages pools, and from uh, uh, message messages pool pools to the Tendermint node. Tendermint validates all messages uh, as much as uh, it, it can and then uh, implement a total order uh, broadcast. So that means that all uh, transactions, uh, input transactions from different Udica nodes uh, will be ordered in the same order, of course. And then, and then each Udica node uh, use Tendermint RPC uh, interface to retrieve uh, 
the mind or proposed tender sorry, uh, to retrieve um, committed uh, tendering blocks uh, to perform static and semantic validation, removes all corrupted messages, uh, generates a file coin block with the only uh, correct messages, and then uh, it does several things. The first is it translates the minor address uh, because uh, the minor is a tendermint node. And now uh, we want to uh, uh, use uh, Udica, the corresponding Udica node address. So we translate uh, the tendermint node address into a Udica uh, address. Then we uh, retrieve the original uh, hash of the block from tendermint and add it into the special field in the file coin block. Uh, send, uh, we send the block over P2P and apply the messages. Uh, and I, I don't know, <laughs> can you see uh, the picture or not? Uh, but this is the uh, block scheme, how it works and how uh, components and, uh, and um, real uh, functions from the uh, Udica are used. So, if, so I will uh, describe the flow, uh, the flow process. So the same messages, uh, there is a minor and, and I should say that uh, uh, consensus interface in Udica uh, has uh, uh, three main methods, create block, uh, validate block, and validate pub sub block. And another important function is mine. mine. So in, my, in that uh, function, we retrieve all uh, messages from original Udica mempool, and then put them into a special message pool only that is only used in our implementation. The idea is that, uh, unfortunately, Tendermint has a bug that as a result, uh, Tendermint node uh, can, that, that bug can lead to hanging uh, the Tendermint node if we send to the same messages and it has not been fixed so far, unfortunately. So, and uh, another uh, reason is that this mempool is local and Tendermint RPC is remote and throughput are different. And without this message pool, we would send the same messages uh, many several hundred times, the same messages, okay? So we use a broadcast uh, text sync method. Uh, this method is implemented in Tendermint and it guarantees that, uh, that if uh, the function returns, uh, doesn't return an error, then the message will be added into a block eventually. Actually, there are, uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then we send uh, messages into Tendermint node. Tendermint node uh, does all magic and uh, uh, we use and there is another uh, flow uh, for validation. So after we send all messages, we are trying to mine a block. We receive the same, we access the block with the same head as we need. We filter 
all messages because they can be incorrect or corrupted by uh, other tendermint nodes or uh, non uh Udico nodes. And then we filter them out, uh, perform validation uh, in tendermint sense. And what does it mean? I will uh, describe in the next slide. Uh, add minor add a hash of the block from Tendermint, and then send uh, these blocks over uh, the existed P2P connection with uh, other nodes. Any questions related to this scheme? So you said Tendermint related validation. Why doesn't, why does Tendermint related validation happen in the Unicorn node and not in Tendermint? Uh, because uh, Tendermint would need all uh, would need to know state, and we don't uh, know that. Okay, so it can do a basic static validation. The static term is according to Filecoin spec. Uh, there are static validation that can be uh, implemented in Tendermint, and another one is semantic. Uh, validation and yeah, uh, we... yeah. sorry go ahead okay so okay. is there a benefit for putting any validation in in tendermint actually yes it's possible in the first model in tendermint centric what would you do which validation yes well, because... and we decided to not apply that. Yes, but why wouldn't you? But you want to help out with something, no? Sorry? You want to help out with something in the validation, no? Yeah, because if, if I can, rather than pushing like Filecoin related validation to Tendermint, why don't I just do Filecoin related validation in the Yuriko node and Tendermint just orders? That, that's what she does. Ah, okay, because. So then it's called it's filtering messages. Right, there, is a part, right. there is a part here. Correct me, Dennis, if I'm wrong. Right? Yeah, I, I see. I just on the slide it makes sense. Yeah. Yes, but then, 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 then it didn't you say that you push some validation to Tendermint? A basic validation, only very trivial basic validation, because there are uh, different messages. At least we have two uh, messages: one cross messages and uh, and another one signed messages. And we can validate very trivial properties for that message. And also, uh, I uh, use uh, another type of messages for registration, uh, Udico nodes. Uh, so if you want, I can highlight this topic. So the idea is that, and you will see this uh, in demo. So while I will be starting uh, the deployment, the tendermint height will be maybe uh, 100. And of course, we, we know that all these blocks will be empty because we have not started mining. Our Udico nodes have not started mining yet. And we don't need uh, to apply, validate, and so on, uh, validate those messages from tendermint blockchain. Correct? Yeah. And uh, because of that, we can skip them. So I am trying to calculate the blockchain offset between Tendermint and uh, Tendermint blockchain and um, Filecoin blockchain. And because of that, I need uh, several other uh, types of messages. And because of that, I need to validate them. Validate means in that case is just to look at the last byte and try to decode them. And we should parse this input message as one of the existed message in the protocol. Signed message, uh, just a message or a registration message. And, 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 and that's, that's all validation in Tendermint. Uh, these are Tendermint specific terms, right? Uh, which one? Validation. 
other types of messages? Or it's, is it Python specific? It's Python, right? You sign messages. Okay. okay, okay, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, no, no, okay. it's fair enough. Yeah, thanks. The name of the function, but they, yeah. they do what they <laughs> promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, thanks. Makes sense. Okay. And so uh, the most, from my perspective, uh, interesting uh, slide uh, about the slide is about block mining and validation. So uh, this is a Tender Winter PC interface, uh, Udica node, uh, Udica uh, block, and suppose. And suppose uh, that we are going to mine this block. So that mean that we received all, so we know the height, we retrieved all transactions from RPC, uh, from tender with RPC for that uh, height. Uh, and we, we added them into our block template. Uh, then uh, let's suppose that, and, and there are of course uh, several Udica nodes, then we'll do the same. And if they would use, if they use uh, traditional uh, signing, I mean elliptic curve uh, signing, then all valid, then they all blocks would be valid, but they, will would have the different signatures yes and because of that we don't use block uh, signature it's nil and instead of uh, block signing we use block hashing so uh, to validate block we uh, the Udica node that uh, um, has received the block over p2p uh, goes to tender with RPC using height value and compare to hashes, hashes from the original block in Tendermint and uh, the field that is uh, current, currently uh, live uh, in, in ticket field in Udica, in Filecoin blockchain message. Uh, and then, uh, Address, address address translation. So, in, sorry. In, so, I'm just asking what is ticket used for when it's not used for? It's it's this. used to, like, it's the proof of a leader in the Python consensus. Okay. But we're using to get, like, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Okay. yes, because we don't use it in delegated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, that's it. Yeah, and the next topic is um, uh, address translation. So, uh, Udica node received all information that is needed to send the new block. But of course, this node wants uh, to uh, fill and it must uh, add or own address. But this block from Tendermint has another address and uh, for only implementation reasons. So uh, the idea is that address formats in uh, formats in Tendermint and Udica in Filecoin are totally different. <laughs> uh, Udica uses uh, black, black function, uh, Tendermint uh, uses uh, Shot to five six, yeah, and uh, Tendermint uses RIPEMD. Sorry, Tendermint uses RIPEMD function and shot to five six, and moreover, uh, the format of public keys is also different. Uh, Udica uses compressed coordinate, com compressed public key, and Tendermint uses uncompressed. Uh, or, or vice vice versa, uh, I don't remember. Uh, so the idea that to uh, to add the correct address of the target Udica node, we have to resolve the address. 
so we know hate, the, we know uh, proposer address, we can use Tendermint RPC to know, to get its public key, and then uh, we can uh, form, get a UDIC address from this public key. And only then we add this uh, new UDIC address in the file Cohen block. Future plans. Uh, demo, uh, I mean, today's demo. <laughs> uh, then uh, code review. Uh, I think that uh, Alfonso will find many things I will have to fix. And of course, the current implementation is not efficient, but it is effective. Okay. Uh, I mean, it works. Uh, at least so far. Uh, then uh, there is no any testing. Uh, and I think that I should add unit testing and maybe uh, AWS light for lightweight formal methods. Uh, I have experience uh, applying these methods and I um, briefly mentioned them uh, on one of the meeting, I think. And maybe uh, we should talk, discuss, or even try to implement if it's necessary permissionless setting. Okay. That's all. Alfonso, comment. Uh, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I think Alfonso will yeah. have a comment with yeah. regard to the unit testing. We, we were doing this was a previous discussion, right? But we were doing a lot of integration testing rather than. No, we are doing unit testing okay, rather are. than integration testing. Oh, yeah. No? Yeah. What we do is usually, I mean, we don't have end-to-end -end integration tests. Okay. We have uh, unit tests for each of the packages, and okay. then the way in which we test it works is through the and, and, and like you see. We hope for the best. Yes, we hope okay. for the best. <laughs> and uh, what I was going to ask, uh, Dennis, is how are you, I mean, how are you planning to, uh, if we use the uh, AWS Lightweight like Promote methods, do you think that it's possible to apply them in the current project? Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me briefly describe the idea of uh, the me method. So, uh, okay. So, uh, the the idea is to is to uh, create different implementations of the same interface. So, if I want to implement uh, that method in um, Udica plus Tendermint, then I would uh, implement Tendermint RPC with very uh, simple properties. For example, uh, if I send the message to Tendermint to special endpoint of that implementation, I will receive the same message with the, with the provided height. And then I can run property-based testing, for example, and uh, ask to prove informally, of course, uh, prove the engine that if all messages in all blocks are corrupted, then no one uh, block on file coin will be on uh, on file coin will be mined. Okay. So uh, there is, in real production implementation, I use the real uh, Tendermint implementation interface. And for testing, uh, so this is like a mocking, but this is sophisticated mocking. And the, differ the differences between mocking and the, the approach by AWS is that uh, implementations uh, must be uh, right in languages with uh, very strong guarantees like Rust, Go, C++, Haskell, and, and so on. So I can't use, according to the proposed method, I can't use Python, for example, or uh, not Node.js, okay? 
Uh, so uh, that's the idea. Okay, understood. And yeah, that's great. I don't know if it makes sense for this project, but it's great that we have that to supply mm -hmm. from you. Yeah. So you mentioned it's uh, the implementation is not e efficient. So what, like, do you have any intuition about the order? How would you mention the overhead? I guess, yeah. Uh, from my perspective, for example, uh, there are many repeated constructions in the validations functions, even in the Udico. For for example, in val validate block and validate block pops up because validate block pops up calls a validate block. At least, at least uh, this one. Um, maybe there is some uh, some uh, requirements why we have that but i so i think I, I thought about some kind of these inefficiencies or another one is of course a uh, message pool so message pool is very simple it's a map in memory in golang uh, that uses a hash of the message as a key and that provides property that all messages uh, will not be sent twice to Tendermint. And it works, but it works not officially, of course, not officially, not so officially as it could. So, so do you think it would be useful to have a baseline comparison against lean Tendermint versus what you implemented from Udico and have a benchmark essentially that compares the two? Uh, ben but, but benchmarking with uh, so benchmarking two implementations of uh, Tendermint integration or Tendermint it alone on the same and on that same test that you basically put the load not to Tendermint directly but you put the load to Udico and you see what happens. Uh, we know what uh, will happen. Uh, Tendermint uh, will be hanging and it will not work. Well, can't you just attach some dummy like a local clock timestamp in nanoseconds to make each message unique? And then yes, yes, this your uh, yes, this is the message pool implementation, but it's very very simple. Uh, maybe fifty lines of code. Yeah, no. What I think what Mark is suggesting is that we have Tendermint alone sending a bunch of messages. And then have the Udico uh, integration with Tendermint sending a, must a bunch of messages so that we can compare the overhead of adding a Udico in. So, so if there are overheads or not by using just Tendermint and a Udico plus Tendermint. Does yeah, that make sense? This is exactly what I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, about Udico with which consensus? With Tendermint. With Tendermint. So to compare like the overhead that is imposed by like, that is introduced by Udico by using mm -hmm. Tendermint. Yes, yeah. Makes sense, I think. Do, do you think this is a lot of overhead to do this kind of performance test? Let's call it that. Uh, I don't think that it's a lo lot of work. Uh, <laughs> but but, by, just... but but I would prefer uh, code review first, then testing, and then experiments. I'm not prioritizing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not suggesting to prioritize this. No, no. I'm just suggesting on the roadmap. Let's say. Yeah. So my suggestion then it would be like do a PR, a draft PR right away that I can start reviewing, even if like the code changes. But that way we can start iterating, and then mm -hmm. once we are happy. We can before merging do this simple test so that we can include like the benchmark dots and so on, and have a nice package to include in the vehicle. Does that make sense? What's, what's also I don't know if you want to write it as a test or not, but just to add, what should be done is killing one node and seeing what happens. So if you have a network of four nodes, you need to be able to kill a node, put it back. So a, a great demo would actually you know demo the, of course the good case, and once we are happy then basically kill one node, bring it up, ideally kill an after some time while, while this node A, A we should have nodes A, B, C, and D, you kill the node A, node A comes back, it catches up, you kill the node B, and you show that you can basically kill one node at a time. 
that would be amazing then. Yes, yeah, I totally agree, but which node? A Tendermint or <laughs> Utica? <laughs> I don't care. Well, yeah. no, we do. I mean, we do care. The machine. <laughs> we, we want to break the assumption that, that oh. the two nodes are, are always uh, so so both. Oh. But oh. Not... <laughs> no, no, but like, I mean, in the end, the one that we want to break is Tenor because it's the one yeah. that runs the consensus. So yeah. you, you want to take out, what? let's say, if I, if I say take out node A or then take out A standard with node, but you can also kill Unicode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because exactly. I mean, yeah. But so probably because, it, yeah. because that way you don't have to risk. I mean, it doesn't matter, I guess. Oh, but that's the point. <laughs> you don't want to test your. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh, let's test it. <laughs> no, no, I'm kill, kill it, I'm, I'm comfortable. <laughs> Please. No, but I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, if you're going to test, if you're going to kill one, you kill, try both of it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Make yeah. sure that. Some conditions. scenario that makes sense, you, 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 can, you can propose your own scenario, what you think is reasonable, let's, you know, we can quickly review it on the next meeting. And, and uh, so these two things, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to do great demos when, when everything goes well, but I would complement this with some failure scenario. And this performance and this would already look great. In my okay, yeah, makes sense, yes. And uh, one more question: Can you can you elaborate a little bit more on how, because what this is this is of a very a big interest to me? What exactly is the interface between the the Tendermint node and the Urico node? And actually, if you go to the next slide with the colorful arrows, yes. So basically, the vertical arrows are this interface, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how, is the, how does this interface exactly work and why do we have to do the address translation and so on? So uh, this interface provides us access to uh, blocks from Tendermint blockchain. So we can, if we want to mine block number 10, we go to, uh, via Tendermint RPC and ask to provide the block number uh, 10. And then uh, Tendermint block has uh, Tendermint address, Tendermint validator address, uh, sorry, Tendermint proposer address. And uh, the corresponding, the node corresponding to a proposer in Tendermint network will be uh equal to proposer in Udica network, correct? But because of the address, the address the addresses ha have the different format, we can add Tendermint address directly because it doesn't make sense in uh file coin network. Sure, sure. What what I mean Ah, okay, okay. I think I think I need it. So basically, in Filecoin, when I receive a block, I I do need to obtain the information who proposed the block. Yeah, because in in uh, we use P2P from Udica, and uh, Udica nodes my my uh, must uh, update the state, and if uh, block addresses will be from Tendermint node, Tendermint network, they would not be able to update the state correctly. Yes. And now, now uh, for example, could, could it be done that this, these vertical arrows are extremely simple? We just, there's one arrow towards the Tendermint or general ordering service. We basically, you give, so in one sentence, it would be, I give it a sequence of byte arrays in arbitrary order and it gives me back some sequence of byte arrays in a consistent order across all Unicorn nodes. And then whatever I need on top of that, I will actually encode in, in whatever I send to the ordering service. Yes, that but, but we need to uh, validate uh, the given information somehow, right? 
So we must access also some hashes or signatures from the uh, RPC, right? Do we? But, but this basic idea, you are absolutely correct. This is the same algorithm. But yeah, we, okay. can't, we can't uh, uh, change Tendermint uh, implementation. And because of that, we must adapt their uh, features. Yes, I, I was just thinking whether we can draw a really thick line of abstraction between that and, and use really Tendermint only for ordering byte arrays, nothing else. Because this is, this is if, if we can do this, then it's very easy to switch Tendermint for, let's say, near BFT or something. And then when, when a Unico node wants to propose something, it actually attaches all the necessary metadata to, uh, to this byte array. The ordering just orders that somehow when, when it comes out again, then you would unpack it. Yeah. And it will be completely Tendermint uh, unspecific. Yeah. We can do that with the caveat that you may need for checking, you may need an auxiliary method in the sense that Tendermint is not giving you all of the information, you access it. So the implementation, it's an implementation detail. The interface can be as you mentioned, okay. but under the hood, it may require additional calls because like Tendermint doesn't give you the block, you have to access it rapidly. Ah, uh, right. Well, it will like, yeah, but the, the wrapper around that, that's what Benny said, like the high level, the wrapper, right. it definitely can be, and okay. it's actually okay. what the, the thing that he did. Okay, perfect, very nice, very nice. So, and he was thinking, one thing that I really like is that Benny had new EFT in mind, when he was implementing this. Actually, he was yeah, suggesting yeah. maybe a few from the script, but yeah, the idea is to have an interface and that's why maybe we have to iterate on it, where you just send a bunch of, that's why we should need messages and not blogs from a or something else because yes, you send yes. bytes, order them, receive them, check them and like execute them. Very so nice. hopefully that, I mean, not easy, but like it's, it, it was- Very nice, no, right. beautiful. It's true, okay. No, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> that's the easy part. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just I'm just, I, I would I just got slightly worried when we like were reusing fields and hacking yes, stuff in. This is usually implementation detail. <laughs> yes. Yes, but, but as soon as soon as the implementation starts relying on that, it, it's it's tricky. Yes. So, so the idea is that one of these functions of, or the interface potentially would have to give you the signature or ticket of the leader or a way of checking that the message is so that, that the ordering is correct. Because you're yeah. just receiving a block, and yeah, but I trust the the tendermint. Yes, so, but you you trust your tendermint. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I trust the tendermint ordering service in yes, total. But then you don't use the same. So the problem with tendermint is that it's using an independent independent transport layer, mm -hmm. which means that when you sync from scratch, you're receiving it from gossip sub. So you need some additional information to check that the message is correct. But like, again, that's implementation detail, not- Yeah, okay, well, I can, I can we, begin we can that look way. At yeah. it low level, yeah. Because cool, cool. Unicode nodes talk to each other as well. Yes. They talk a lot to each other. Right. So, so basically, but, but then basically, uh, the payload dissemination part can be taken off the shoulders of the order. Yes. yes, that's the thing with new BFT is gonna be really interesting because there, so in Tendermint, we didn't want to go and like fork Tendermint. But yes. with new BFT, we have the interface already. That's why I asked yesterday the net interface, what was it? Yes. Because yes. we have it, which means that we can reuse whatever we have. You can just plug that in. Yes. To, and yes. this won't be a problem anymore because you're using it. Yes. The ordering server is using the same transport layer you are using. Yes. Which perfect. is not the case here. Yes. Actually, even, even the payload dissemination yes. is decoupled in, yes. in that. So, yes. so. Which is not the case here because of the. Right. We, we didn't want to go. It's a platform for us. So that's right. why I said like the interface is correct. The implementation may not be because of the right, right, right. I see. Okay, very nice, very nice. I'm looking forward to putting that together. Nice. Good, great. Any more questions? So we have a demo, right, Dennis? Yeah, we have a demo, and because I didn't perform fault integration testing, I <laughs> I will show the video. Okay. And uh, I annotate the video, if you don't mind. <laughs> this is very good for, to avoid this problem that you never get an error, but when you're the demo goes, yes, the demo goes. We sacrifice people from yes. <laughs> 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 Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, I will 
use not traditional setup. Uh, <laughs> Alfonso doesn't use uh, such setups. But anyway, so uh, I will use uh, Tmux uh, terminals and my ID uh, JetBrains from JetBrains. Okay, so I hope you see my screen. So uh, we we uh, run our uh, deployment. Oh, oh not run. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you didn't sacrifice the <laughs> You thought you would escape. <laughs> yeah. uh, this script in the repo. So this one is for uh, subnet. And uh, the upper one is uh, Tendermint for node uh, deployment. And this one proof of work daemon. This one is proof of work miner and uh, bottom uh, terminals are from uh, proof of work miner from an, another subnet. And here we have two nodes, Udico 1 and Udico 0, and here we'll use subnets. And uh, we can see that uh, Tendermint uh, is working. Um, and now we uh, connect, we, now we uh, uh, trying to get uh, address and uh, connect uh, the node Udico 1 to Udico 0 over P2P. And now they're in sync. we start a consensus in subnet uh, another uh, wrong address. Oh, no, correct address. Uh, proof of work is working. Uh, the Udico one nodes is joining. Uh, we start mining in uh, Tendermint and the same for the Udico one node. And this address is wrong and I will fix it. Start mining. Uh, no errors. And now we will send uh, money. The wrong address. And now we are trying to send them in. We received 13 fields and uh, the same for Utica uh, one node. And that's all. So uh, it uh, requires many manual interactions. So probably I should improve that. And, or maybe 
we will use manual approach for fault uh, tolerating a demo. So any ideas will. Yeah, that's all. Where is, uh, where is slides? Okay, any new questions, <laughs> comments? So the Unico node acts as a client to the Tendermint order, right? Uh, also having NearBFT in mind, uh, does Tendermint keep explicit client identities, like in, in, any information about client identities? And does, does it track which clients, does it any, any form of access control? Um, so, not necessarily access control, but does it, does it actually uh, use any information about what, who submitted what? As, as I know, currently not. Uh, yeah. Alfonso, correct me if I'm wrong. No, it's right. So, so the thing is that uh, we, I mean, you need identities in order to sign proposals and votes in Tendermint. And our, our workaround for this, so that we didn't have to use different identities, is that we use a set, like Dennis did a translation, so that we can use the same SECP uh, keys that we use to identify Unicode nodes for Tendermint. So that there's nothing specific, Tendermint specific. Yeah. But, so even the cryptographic like primitive used in Tendermint should be compatible with our identities. Yeah, yeah, and I don't even mean at the implementation level, but fundamentally, actually, and this is this is a problem with with MirBFT. It would, could be a problem in general that that MirBFT, when 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 somebody submits a, a request for ordering, MirBFT need to know like which client submitted it and how many how many requests the client submitted before, so it actually that, keeps that, track. Okay, did you mean at a, at a Network layer. No, at, no, at the at an abstract level. Like I'm, I'm a client. So, yeah, so yeah. At the Unico node, I submit a block, then I submit You're another. You're signing block. the messages. So I'm signing the messages, and and Tendermint is configured to 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 uh, verify the signature and so on, or could be. No, no, no. That would come before, right? Before sending. So if Tendermint is only doing order. Yes. So Eudico will take the message. You could check the, the source of the message and say, hey, and like keep state of what messages have been yes. sent. There. Well, no, but it, it actually interferes with what I was saying before that you just send a bunch of bytes and, and you receive a bunch of bytes. In a, but you're doing in a, that. So at a tenant level, you're doing that. I know, I know, but it, at the near BFT level, you actually don't do just that. You, you do need to attach some meta information to that. I, I remember client watermark the why. Yes. I don't remember why. why? Uh, because because without that you are susceptible to some to some to more forms of like DOS attacks and uh, in, imbalance attacks and stuff like that. Okay, we probably need to come back to that. But normally, that, so so that's also permission blockchains. But how it would work? You would pay a fee for each of these transactions. Well, well, I think here it's not even that critical because you know the set of clients. It's a set of Unico nodes. So that is totally fine. It's just that uh, we need to somehow count for that, maybe. So that would be the same. Uh, yes, but you. Would be the same, no? Yes, what, so, what so trivial the set of clients would be just the set of Unicorn nodes. But when you do reconfiguration, you might actually need to explicitly tell the ordering service, hey, I'm reconfiguring. Yes. No, I mean, it's not nothing like, not, I don't think it's a big problem, but it's something to keep in mind. Then we'll call our reconfiguration interface is looking, well, let's, let's yeah. go offline. Thanks a lot, Dennis. This, this, this was great. Any other questions? I, I don't have any questions. Maybe next step. Thank you for your attention and questions. So next steps, we, we scratched a bit, so. Essentially, yeah. like apart. So, 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 can you summarize next steps apart of what we discussed now? Maybe to add this poll. Should be five minutes in the 
yeah. testing for faults and, and medical performance tests. So what, what else do you need to plan? After review and uh, implementation uh, fixing? Right, 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 you mentioned it the last time. Yes. So review, implementation, these quick benchmarks if we can. And then... Uh, uh, I, I said about permissionless setting and AWS-based approach, formal method testing, if, need, if it necessary. What does permissionless setting now mean? Udica permissionless is in permissionless setting. So uh, Tendermint can be used in permissionless setting because Cosmos is a permissionless. So if it's interesting for the project, we, we can at least think about it. Yeah, but I'm wondering what's... I, oh, you mean that other... <laughs> Sorry, is, is the web that... Other tender mint joints can other tender mint nodes can join the yes network because it's permissionless, ah, even okay. if they don't have matching Udico nodes. But, of course, if they match Udico nodes, <laughs> so if there is a two nodes, we we can try to join them in the permissionless setting. Oh yes. Oh, if, if it's not necessary, <laughs> we can skip that. Then it's correct me if I'm wrong. Is that if I'm an Udico node that wants to run Tendermin, I should be able to include my Tendermin node into the Tendermin network without any kind of permission? Right? Yes, it, it, at least it's possible in Tendermin world because Cosmos works in this manner. Okay, so so, so is the demo the following? So you're running the four four nodes, and there is a fifth node joining the subnet. Is this the uh, demo? Yeah. I, I don't know how to do this. Uh, I just uh, <laughs> suggest the ideas for further research. I, I don't know, uh, is it simple or not? I uh, have not uh, done this so far, so I don't know. Important to put yes. it on your agenda, yeah, because we will need it for any protocol. Yes. We will need this feature. So what do you mean by permission as you mean reconfiguration? Yes, yeah. I think so. Yes. Okay, so that's important, yes. Yeah. So we have a faulty case. We have well code reuse. This is this is like uh, let's say for checking features. Additional features would be faulty demo with four nodes, performance benchmarking, and actually adding nodes and removing nodes. So let's put this on the on the agenda and see how far we go. I mean, yeah. Ideally, we should get all this covered, but let's, let, you know, let's try to make it realistically, you know, how much time would you need for each of these things? And I guess we can pick it up on Monday. And, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I think, so the other thing is, so we do have a demo day this Thursday, right? Which we're not scheduling by 5 4 or we weren't. We could. I mean, we do have a demo. Yeah, I think it would be nice for others to see. This. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we'll probably if it would never be recorded person. because it's like, yeah, I mean, it's like three a.m. for 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 Dennis. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, we could have a. Good. Yeah. Does that sound okay to you, Dennis? Demoing, uh, recording a five or ten minute demo. I, I don't know. So the demo you recorded did not have audio, right? Mm -hmm. In in February. So, sorry. What, de when demo? Uh, when you just did, I you were speaking right live, okay. or was it? Or, or, Five minutes. Speaking, but was there a back yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the question. <laughs> for when is the demo? So the, demo, ah, yeah. so the demo is this Thursday at, I think, 3 a.m. your time. That's why I'm saying recorded because, <laughs> because we're not that mean. <laughs> but it could be basically of, of what you showed today. So if you have that already recorded with, uh, with uh, audio explanation, we can just reuse that. 
Mm -hmm. um, or if you want, it's up to you. But but yes, so so we would have an advanced demo which was not scheduled, and then for for the March demo day, which was scheduled, then we we will uh, do more stuff. And if we have benchmarks and stuff, that that would also be pretty cool. So uh, I will record the demo, correct? Yeah, I mean, if you want to be awake at 3 a.m., you can. I'm just telling you, <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah, you know. <laughs>